What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Street Apologies Live. I'm your host, Vocab Malone. This is a Christian apologetic show where we serve the underserved and look into the overlooked. I'm joined today by members of Cross Room with Tonic and Earthquake. Welcome to Street Apologies Live, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time very much. Thank Tell you people what you've us. been up to lately. Tonic, what have you been up to lately? Uh, so lately, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been here about 10 years. I uh, live a pretty quiet life. Uh, serving in my church at wellspring church uh um and i mean i just serve there in different capacities uh but i'm also um i continue to try to engage the culture through the same way i did at one time i did it through music and if anybody's followed me uh, through the past couple years i look to do that same thing in an encore through a company i've been building for years called issachar media so that involves being able to come at the culture and engage the culture for Christ and from all these different angles other than just music. So that could be film, that could be uh, music, that could be content, as you saw Uncle Johnny and the Professor. If you ever saw Uncle Johnny versus the world, that was also an attempt to do that through like video game uh, streaming and an interaction. So. Uh, just making myself busy with that while at the same time married to my wife, Holly, and raising three kids. One of my kids just went off to college last year. She's doing well at NC State. I got another uh, uh, daughter who's uh, going off to college. This is her senior year in high school. And then I got a 13-year-old son bringing up the rear. So that pretty much keeps me pretty busy. Excellent. A hey, Christ-centric yeah. just commented, the gift. <laughs> Yeah, well, he had to go way back if he remembers that for sure. <laughs> sure. To those who don't know. But for those who don't know, yeah, this is the gift. I be the tiny, oh. and that's Earthquake right there. So we yeah. comprised the group called The Gift that was one of the groups. Like, we were all individuals. I think we were the only group at, well, not necessarily. I'm thinking about Brady, the Fanatic, and Juan were a, a group at one time called, what was it, God's Gang, I think it was. Righteous Brothers? Gang. Righteous, righteous brothers, righteous gang. Yeah, but we, righteous were, gang. We, were the, we were the only group in the cross movement that actually yeah. formed like yeah, everybody else. Well, no, no, do some light though. Do some yeah, light. Yeah. So children of light. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. there were a bunch of individual groups and individuals that actually came together as a Voltron and formed cross movement. But Cleve and I were one of those entities called the gift at one time years before the there was a cross movement. We are very glad to have the gift with us today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> wow. Earthquake, what you been up to lately? Yeah, man. So um, just been at my church for the past, wow, 20 years now, actually. Um, been youth pastoring for 15. I just recently uh, retired from doing that, working with the 21 to 31-year-old at St. Matthew's Baptist Church in Williamstown under uh dr raymond m gordon is well known in the area and actually throughout the country do gets it in solid in fact deuce in life uh we used to uh that's the ambassador in true life used to attend that church uh, years ago before they moved away just serving you know and and just kind of going in hard married married matter of fact i just celebrated 28 years of marriage oh, uh, congratulations. Have, I'm, the, I'm the old head in the crew uh, mm -hmm. and, yeah and wells used to like to point that out um, whenever you know it's crazy whenever they ask you said it things, you said like, it i didn't say it cleave is no ain't nobody asked you but yeah i've been married 28 years for my it's wife true, love, and uh, not true and that's very true um and then um, i think that's where all I, those the really old samples came from you <laughs> i think you're i'm saying you're the one who you're the one who found them right See, the, i don't see? know if that's a compliment right there or if you're coming to <laughs> no because you picked out good music just from a all right yeah, 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 especially those who have the first album that we had to redo. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, two children. Um, son is um, in the Air Force and daughter's attending uh, NYU currently. And, uh, yeah, just, just trusting the Lord, loving him. Uh, my main occupation is doing insurance. You know, I do all kinds of insurance, so that's what I do. But my passion is, is serving the Lord and certainly um, just making him famous. Just making him famous. Well, it's awesome to see, you know, all that... I mean, it's a blessing. It speaks to to faithfulness and and, and uh, dependability and availability. So it's an awesome thing to see. Well, in light of that, and in light of this, a book by your former uh, artist, uh, 
Brady Goodwin Jr., a.k.a. The Fanatic. Let there be gaslight. You know, we've been responding to this. Today, we're going to do chapter one with you two gentlemen. And um, it's going to be a little bit different. This is less of a critique than it is really just a response. Somebody's playing with the bottom of their phone or something. Or somebody's got a mouse chewing something. Something's constantly being adjusted. You guys hear that sound? It ain't me. One of y'all got like a, a, a mouse chewing on one of your wires. I'm I'm saying that euphemistically to say there's some noise going on on, on somebody the bottom of somebody's phone or something. Anyways, so now here we are uh, responding to this this book written by Brady, and it's a wild thing to say, but some people are now scratching their heads and being like, "Dang, was cross movement real?" People want to know was cross movement. Real hard question to ask, but got to get it out of the way. Hmm. You, you know, start, um, I would say, sit again. Yeah, I would, no, I would say, am I coming through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little louder. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I would say that's an interesting question. Like one of the things I would have to say early on is people kind of wondered that it was almost like. You know, like we were so committed into the Lord, like, you know, and our testimony can kind of speak to it. But we was we were focused in on Christ. And when we went for the Lord, that's what it was. Nothing about that was fake. Nothing about that was contrived. It wasn't like we grew up in church. It wasn't like at least I didn't. It wasn't like, you know, coming from the east, you know, around our way. What, Cat's I wasn't going to church. If you was going to church, it was real. And so it just naturally came out of what we were already doing. I was a DJ. I was making beats on an 808 and 909. I was doing beats. Wells was rapping. I won't tell his story, but when we came together, we were convinced on who the Lord was. And, you know, it was like, Dad, you know, I do what I do. Man, I don't want to do it any other way anymore. Let's, let's like, I want to do it for the Lord now. So it was always real. Like, our walk has always been that way. What you saw... And what you heard in those albums was real. No one was, no one was trying to do it to where we thought we could get a deal. There weren't any deals to be had. Um, there wasn't. We weren't trying to gain popularity. We're in a time where people would literally attack you for being a Christian. You know, they would literally jump you or fight you. In fact, if, you know, they treated you like you was, like you were, like you were soft if you came for the Lord. You know, it's a time when Nas is talking about he went to hell for 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 snuffing out Jesus, like that type yeah. of situation. So. It was real, bro. Like, real talk. Hey, I'm going to let you enter as well, uh, Tonic. But True Life is in the mm -hmm. building. It's True Life. I am here, brothers. Hey, what? shout out to True Life. Yeah. Life. I'm saying he's in the live oh, chat. Mm -hmm. oh. got life. Okay, cool. Uh, life, life. If life. You, it's up to y'all. I'm just this guy. But life, if you're trying to come on or get any time, I can send you the link. You just got to message me at Cab Malone or Vocab Malone or one of these brothers could give it to you. That's that's on you. But I'm glad you're here either way. But yeah, was it real? Tonic, was it real? Oh, he got frozen up, man. He got frozen up. <laughs> well, I'll read a couple. I got Luis. My man says, these guys had such an impact on me as a young Christian in an MC. Seriously, love and respect you guys with my whole so a lot of people do feel feel that way about you guys. Okay, you're unfrozen now. Tonic, was it real? Yeah, I think uh, that's an interesting question because it makes me want to ask a question almost. Like when people say, was it real? Like what was what real? Was the Christianity real? Were we real ministers of the gospel? Were we faking? Were we just playing? Um, sometimes I think it really questions like that, I think that they're okay and they're innocent, but it does make me sometimes, I think I've lived long enough to want to question the question sometimes. It just reminds me one time when Jesus, I think he was talking to the Pharisees or to the religious leaders at the time, he said, he was talking about John the Baptist. He said, what did y'all go out to see? Someone in fine linen and this and that. So I think like we've lived long enough and kind of uh, been in ministry long enough, served long enough that question probably can be answered honestly that I think we were real. It doesn't mean that we were without faults or without uh, shortcomings. I think that actually makes it even more real because that's part of the whole story is that we're sinners, um, we're, we're fallible and God is the one who's perfect. And so 
even when it comes to situations like this, having somebody in our crew, um, you mm-hmm. know, lead the faith and so publicly and now is going the opposite way and trying to lead others that way. I think that actually also proves what the Bible has said. And, and this isn't a new situation. So, yeah, I would say we're real. Um, but at the same time, it makes me want to say, like, wait, why is that a question again? Um, but I understand. It's just, well, I, you know, I know what you're saying. Uh, from my, what it seems like is this has kind of messed with people's reality. People that were, you know, that were, that were there, especially in the moment. Um, you know, like you'll hear story after story. Uh, for example, D. New totally introduced me to right theology that wasn't always coming from the pulpit. So, you know, that's that's a lot of people's story. And so then to see Brady do what he's done, walk away from the faith and, like you said, a public way, and then not just leave but say, and here's why, you know, uh, messes with, it kind of messes with people's reality. Now, we got to. You know, I, I like what you said, though. It proves the scripture. You know, it's, it's total depravity is a real thing. The, the fall away is a real thing. Those are real things. And so, uh, but it's just kind of, it's kind of messing with people's heads, man, a little bit. And that's why I, I hope you, I could have you guys on. I'm glad you're on to talk about some of those questions. So with that earthquake, the Lord, what is he teaching you from this? What is he teaching us? It has to be something well, good to come out. Well, you know what? Out. I probably have a different perspective. Uh, one, I think that nothing undermines the Lord. Like, and there's reasons why, and we'll probably get into that later. But nothing is going to undermine the Lord. And this isn't, by the way, um, any just just hopeful thinking or wishful thinking, or you know, where I'm just going to believe without reason. This isn't one of those things. I'm talking about true biblical faith that is a it is a, it is a resolve based upon. You know some things that you understand and know so i'm i'm good number one um listen as crazy as it seemed there was a judas now i'm not saying i'm not saying that 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 brady is a judas i'm not saying that I, that's not my heart that's my man i love him real talk that's that's my dude you know what i mean we're at we're we're at differing opinions and everything but i'm saying principally um there was a person named judas who had been with our lord and he left, right? Right. Not only did he left, he left because there was, uh, I won't get into all the theology, but he left to a people who were looking to betray Christ, that did, did come against him. And then there was a crowd that did so to the point, point that he was tried unfairly, unjustly, the whole nine yards, and put on the cross and died. We're talking about God himself. So if people can betray the Lord himself, can walk away from the Lord himself and not know him. What any other man does isn't surprising to me. Um, that's not to say it's not hurtful. That's not to say that you don't care about that person. I'm just simply saying I'm far less than our, than our, than our Lord. And uh, so is everyone else. And he went through those types of things. So since that happened and that was his experience, then okay. You know what I'm saying? And I think actually this is, I, I have another way of looking. I think as grace is at work, even in this. And so, again, I'm not, not hurt. I'm, I'm hurt about it hurt for him. But certainly, um, I am was shocked. But it's not one of those scenarios where after you've seen the Lord working in the hearts of people and you've seen the things that people get involved in and what God has rescued them from, and, like, it's not, um, it's, it's not undermining my faith, if you will. That's good. That's good. What do you? What do you? What would you say, Tonic? Uh, as far as uh, what are we learning from this? What are you learning from this? I kind of is that was that the question? Because I just got back. Yeah, yeah. What is the Lord inside. teaching you? What is yeah. the Lord teaching us through this? You know. I think if anything, you know, it's funny. I was in my community group the other day, and we were just talking about just some of the difficult things we've been going through. Y'all hear that noise? Yeah, yeah. Earthquake. That's you, man. You're going crazy over there. DJs always bring that ground sound. You know, you'd be on stage getting ready for a show, and there's like a buzz. Crackling. It's the DJ with the always bringing the ground in, man. Eh? Got to ground. Got to ground their wires or whatever. Yeah, earthquake. Yeah, you bring in the DJ crackle, man. 
Maybe, hey, bro, maybe call back, man. Let me, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me put him on mute for now. There, okay. Go ahead, man. I'm, I'm sorry. The DJ's so, yeah. always trying to take over for the MC. You know how it is, but go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying, like, uh, I don't know. I was just talking about this recently and just these tough times. And this, I want to make sure people understand. This is no, like, this is no small item for any of us, um, especially for myself. I think I've had a hard time dealing with this. I think as I've watched and I've been encouraged by the many people who have tried to respond to Brady, whether apologetically or just lovingly sharing um, with him, I've been encouraged by that. Um, but at the same time, um, I think it's interesting because sometimes, you know, you get the the opportunity or you approach it from a, uh, an advantage of being able to just deal with the book just deal with the material, just deal with the arguments that he's presenting. But for me, it's been way more difficult than that because this is this is brotherhood. This is like as close as it comes to being family with somebody um, other than blood. I mean, I've stood in places with Brady where we were ready. We went in ready to die. Um, like, so I think there's some things that was a closeness that the Lord has brought uh, between us that makes these times extra difficult so it's been super duper painful for me and i think i've had to go through the the myriad of emotions that i've had to carry to the lord and, and be on my knees because there's nothing i can do about it like it so what i'm learning is my faith is growing as a result of it my faith is being stretched my relationship uh, with the lord is being strengthened because um, I never imagined, you know, I think in the beginning of his book, he says he never imagined he'd write this. Well, I never imagined he'd write it either. Right. And I never imagined we'd be in a situation like this. And so I think, though, as I've been having the opportunity to catch bits and pieces of what he's talking about and even the small little interactions that we've been able to have, my faith is, like I said, being strengthened. I think I'm growing in places and strengthening muscles that I didn't even know I had. Because it's been, I'm telling you, it's been everything from sadness to anger. Like I could sometimes because I feel like he's been so arrogant and so mean and so something like I'm ready to ask him to step outside. Let's have a fair one, you know, but knowing that that's not the way of the Lord and that kind of wrath doesn't, you know, produce the will of God. And so I've been stretching in my ability to be patient and in those times that are out of my control to trust that the Lord has this, you know, in hand as well. So there's many things I think I'm learning, but that's just probably a, a small inkling of it. Well, that's good. You know, you mentioned words in the book. Let's turn there. I turned to chapter one here. And uh, Earthquake's audio is still a little up and down. I, mean, I still got cracks and stuff going on there, Earthquake. Here's what it says in the beginning. Chapter one of Brady's new book, Let There Be Gaslight, Crisis of Faith, it's titled. Never in a million years did I ever think that I would write a book questioning the validity of the Bible or advocating for an alternative view. I must begin by explaining the challenges that led me into, and then the hope that eventually led me out of, a seven-year-long spiritual depression. It all began when I realized that I could no longer repeat the core claims of the Christian faith and good conscience. On purely literary grounds, I had begun to doubt that the Bible was divine or even defensible. This doubt first arose somewhere around the year 2014, just before I graduated from Westminster Theological Seminary outside my hometown of Philadelphia. What finally delivered me in 2021? I believe it was truth, or at least honesty from other Christians and former Christians who had wrestled similarly and taken unexpected paths on their faith journey. One more paragraph here. Almost all of them had been motivated to rethink their positions on Scripture because of the increasingly convincing claims from the scientific community concerning human origins. And although I did not share their concerns at first, they nonetheless ministered to me as they boldly shared their observations and convictions. As I navigated through their various positions, I gained confidence in where I was willing to stand on the issues and began to find my own way out of a dark and gloomy valley of depression. But before I share precisely why and how I was driven to such despair, it will be helpful to first testify as to my relationship with God and the Bible before my descent into that dark night of the soul. It is really bizarre, man, because he's like, oh, I walked away, I'm freed, I'm in truth, but let me testify to what I did have. Mm. It's a strange testimony right there, but right. but um, 
you know, when you first cracked open this chapter, gentlemen, what's your reaction? What's your reaction to those opening paragraphs? Yeah, I think I think I was kind of stunned as you continue to go along because one of the things that really stunned me is you think as much as I talk about how close we were, how much life we spent together, you could imagine the conversations we've had. You could imagine, you know, once we did connect uh, the many places that we we've been, the testimonies upon testimonies that we've had to give about our stories. Some of the stuff I read early in this book was the first time I ever heard it. Like I think, and I think among probably the rest of our crew, that may be the same thing. It's like when he talks about early, his early years of going into the church, he said, uh, mainly my motivation was that I was attracted to the girls and I liked having another social setting in which I could attain some level of popularity. Yeah, you can. This that. thing just keep, yeah. this thing keeps emerging. Like, and that wasn't the only place where he keeps talking about popularity and being able to be in front of people and speak deep. And, I, and I'm like, wow, like, why am I just hearing this? And so for me, that was that was confusing, and I really didn't understand. I would, like I said, I thought after all these years of being together, you would think 30, 30 years, you would have heard that emerge um, somewhere. And so it made me also think about one other thing, which was, you know, he continues to talk about, um, at least in his post and stuff, maybe not here in chapter one, but he continues to talk about this idea of all the Christians or the theologians that he's encountered that have been kind of dishonest. And so I don't know, it, it just made me say, wait a minute, it's interesting. Here comes these stories that I've never heard before these times when you were being honest matter of fact and it's not just your testimonies it's all these times 30 years of testimonies music where you've laced your testimony you've laced god's word in it you've laced your reactions to it your worship in it um interviews like i said all kinds of stuff a history a 30-year history of bearing your heart before the world and yet we're just hearing this and so I don't know, it made me on the basis of him always like talking about people being dishonest, at least as it relates to the scriptures. It made me say, I feel like maybe he's been a little dishonest this whole time, or maybe on the same standard that he judges everything else, it could be said of him like, wow, you've been holding this that whole time and the closest people to you have never even heard this before. And so he probably would refute that, but I'm just being honest saying right. I've never heard some of the stuff that I've heard in chapter one. So you feel like in a kind of a well, sad way, you were getting to know him better when you read this, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Like I said, I think there's things, I've, things he said in there, I've never heard that before. Earthquake in our private conversation, I feel like when we talked, and your audio sounds good now, by the way, I don't hear any snap, crackle, pop. Um, appreciate that. Um, you indicated something similar. I think one time you said referred to that period of time as a blank. You know, so, some of the some of the things in here, it's like filling in the gap. Um, when you read this, did you kind of feel like blindsided too, or, or how was how was it as far as what uh, Tonic just said? So blindsided. I, I don't know if I would say like to me blindsided for me has a connotation like you snuck me with it. Um, right. I would just say I, I just did not know. Now, again, he may have shared these things with others, but it was a surprise to me. Now, some of that stuff that he gets into the chapter was really before he even came along, you know, and, and linked up with us. But um, but yeah, I just to me, it's unfathomable, honestly, to walk away from the Lord. The, the Lord has just done too many things. He's shown himself real in so many ways you know what i mean yeah. uh, you know not just historically not just just um um in my mind literally not 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 just um you know through geology and, and archaeology and and all the other ologies i think if you're gonna for me personally if you're going to take on a topic such as denying the lord um then i think you ought to go down the same pathways that we do for for those who are atheists who confirm the lord um but do I think, I mean, listen, shocked, you know, you know, he's shocked to write it. I'm shocked to read it. 
you know what I mean? I think it's probably the best way. You keep, on say one thing on you keep on saying yeah. shock. Keep on saying shock. I keep on hearing it in my head. Prepare uh, for the, you yeah. know. And that was him on the. That was him on the hook too. Do you bring the? Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what, crazy. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you say? You say something wells. Yeah, I think I was just gonna add on to what I just said, which was, you know, again, I think I've told Brady like, as painful as this is, as hard as it is, as much as I've continued, and he as well to his credit, um, you know, we've met, we we express love for each other, broke bread together, the whole nine, but the length to which he's going now has presented me with a real dilemma that I think he understands I'll confess. Like, this is a, a fight, not just for him, for his sake, but also a fight for people listening, those that might be immature and led to doubt the Lord as well. And so, you know, with that understanding, I'm I'm just also saying, like, that thing I say, I only say it because, like I said, he's called out people on honesty. He, he said so much. And I'm saying if for 30 years somebody told you one thing to the length that I said Brady did, like this is testimonies. This is like preaching in other countries where they don't even speak, where we don't even speak their language. Like, and you never hear these things. But now all of a sudden there's a book. Suddenly there's a new Brady with this whole new thing that I've never heard. It makes me say, wait, which one? Which one are we supposed to believe now? Like, because like you just ended with that passage, you said he said he found truth. Like, which one? Like, um, so anyway, yeah, I just think uh, it's like I said, it's a very confounding thing. I think this this is very confusing. Um, I guess I understand it. It's not like we all couldn't find ourselves in a place like this when none of us are above uh, temptation it takes the lord to keep us it's unfortunate for where he finds himself but i think for as much as he holds up the standard of honesty i think anybody reading this book would have to also bend that back toward his way and say wait a minute which one were you being honest about so is it this one or was it the other one you spent 30 years going way into depth on so anyway. somebody in the live chat said will the real slim brady please stand up <laughs> that's good that sounds like some heat said <laughs> well i'll read another paragraph to that end of what you just said this is from page three there was one other benefit that crossed my mind and i believe this is how god got a hold of me or perhaps i got a hold of God, I thought that if I could preach a deep spiritual sermonette during the song service, if I had a good analogy like the lead pastor usually did on Sunday mornings, then it would be extra cool and add even more credibility to my buzz in my little church circle. So I made a bargain with God. If I don't curse, skip school, get into a fight, or sleep with any girls during the week before the upcoming youth service, then he would have to make the event a super spiritual night for me. Most importantly, if I read the Bible beforehand, I could come up with a deep analogy to impress the crowd even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I caught that same quote. And uh, that's the, what I'm talking about. Like, I think as I read this part, these are those stories I've never heard. I thought, man, this is a great case study to show people how not to come to God. Don't come to God for the girls. <laughs> Don't come to God trying to be in a different social platform. Don't come to God trying to be deep and, you know, I mean, in all these ways of being popular. Like, don't approach the Lord that way. Don't approach your um, your discipleship or your being disciple in that way. Like, uh, I think he is clearly laying out. And then as the as things go on, he keeps confessing this idea of when he put the Bible down, when he stopped praying. Uh, Cleve and I are also testifying to like there's these gaps like all this time he was in seminary I feel like Brady was kind of isolated he talks about these group of Christians that were around him that he was accountable to I don't know um and it was it was it was this period where it felt like he went off to school now again to his credit maybe it was just our lives were changing when he went off to seminary the cross movement was kind of ending and everybody was kind of going their ways, planting churches or going back to school or doing other uh, ventures. 
And so may, he was, you know, in Philadelphia. But I don't know. It just seems like this blur. And that's usually an indication. This isolated life where people kind of live. I, I would... I would suspect that there was a lot of isolation, you know, in terms of maybe even his his true fellowship and his true time of, you know, really spending time with the Lord. And doesn't mean that that's not possible and that can't happen. But I'm just saying, if anybody's listening, these are the things to learn. Don't try to come to the Lord for these reasons. These aren't the reasons that that last. Um, these are the things that fall apart when you place your faith on on these pillars they they don't hold up shout out to one uh you know here's a positive takeaway i think it's chapter uh, page five of this book he talks about at all these christian hip-hop concerts he was going to at the time he says at every concert i heard god's side of the story and then he explains the gospel and then he says it was also the best news uh, i'd ever heard and Mm -hmm. so what i mean is shout out to what god was doing Mm-hmm. In the Philadelphia East Coast Christian hip hop scene in those days mm-hmm. in the early '90s, mm-hmm. he talks about because that's, a, despite the s- sad nature of this, obviously that's that's a quite a powerful testimony. Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a yeah, testimony. Yeah. What, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I don't know if you guys caught that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. did, and that story we do know. Okay. We do know that story. Yeah. This is the story that he would tell of connecting with the children of light, which was ambassador and true life where they bounced around the city and Brady started following in the crowd, watching and listening as the gospel was being presented. And this was the model by which he followed and then became a Christian rapper uh, based on that. After spending a long time just watching, not running to the mic, uh, which at that time, again, was applauded. Like that was one of the things I thought was a great, um, a great, uh, characteristic of Brady. He wasn't running, um, trying to get on the mic. He wasn't trying to be a rapper. He was willing to just sit in the crowd and listen and watch Mm. and follow. And so, uh, yeah, I think that was something to be uh, commended. I also want to, I also want to, in fairness, um, bring to light that as I read it, my takeaway, um, I agree 100% with Wells on discipleship. In fact, we, Wells and I had a great disciple, a man named Reverend uh, Walter McDaniel, who took us through so many good things to where we learned and grew strong in the faith. I think in those earlier years um, that he's talking about, I even think, at least in the way I was reading it, I don't think he thought of himself as being saved. I don't think he had given his life to Christ at that point, and he was a teenager. Again, I'm not. that's not to discredit any other teenager who's given their life to the Lord. It's not to discredit any of that. But I think the way I took away from that it kind of gave a background to the fact that I think he was, at least I took it this way, that he was saying that, man, I was making these types of moves, but I wasn't saved. And so if that's the point that he's making, I would agree. That certainly isn't the way you come to the Lord. And that's certainly not the story that I knew about. Um, I would pick up where Wells picked up at, where he did uh, come along and he did, in fact, um, you know, wasn't grabbing for the mic. He did sit and learn. Now, I don't know exactly the intimate details of the conversion, you know, that, that part of the story. Um, but I just want to kind of make that delineation and fairness to at least what I, I you know, in the hand. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Well, it keeps on going. And he says uh, this on page five. After falling even more in love with the God of the Bible and wholeheartedly believing that, but in believing the Bible's message concerning sin and salvation, I became an evangelist and apologist on the streets of Philadelphia. I also used the platform I gained as a Christian rapper to spread abroad the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ and proclaim his excellencies to the nation, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14 and 15. Along with the crossroom with the rap group I co-founded in the mid-1990s, I traveled the world writing, recording, and performing Christ-centered evangelistic hip-hop music, doing apologetics through unapologetically East Coast beats and rhymes. You guys really did uh, always kind of have a not just evangelistic but apologetic element to a lot of what you did, and he testifies to that, which I think that makes that more shocking for a lot of people because you guys were really some of the first ones to bring that, you know? Yeah. I think that was something that was a distinctive about us. Like, we always encouraged each other about the fact that we were ministers of the gospel first. We weren't hip-hop artists first, and a lot of times that would... You know, I think stoked the ire of people who maybe 
had a, made an idol out of hip hop, um, we always knew why we were coming in it. And we were, right. we tried to remind each other about that. Almost like the Hebrew boys, you know, being drugged to Babylon, but declaring like, we're, we're gonna purpose in our heart not to be defiled. So when it comes to the King's table, we already made that decision a long time. When it comes to bowing, at the statue we already made that decision so now when it comes down the decree is out we like king we don't even got to think about that like throw us in the fire like we already made that decision before we got there and so i think that was very very helpful to us and i would encourage anybody who's even approaching any kind of ministry any anything you're using that you think might be an opportunity to engage the culture for christ make that decision early especially mm -hmm. when there's business and other things involved because once you get down the road, I think it's a little bit harder to try, start trying to make those decisions when the temptations come. Not that you're still not going to need the Lord to to be the one leading anyway, um, but I think that's just a great example. And that was part of what who we were as the cross movement. And we always said, take hip hop away and you'll still see us doing the same things. And hopefully um, that's the testimony now you see. Uh, William Branch still serving the Lord, still, you know, with his hand on the plow. You still see Cleve with his hand on the plow. You still see me with my hand on the plow. Cruz still doing what he does. True life still testifying to the glory of God. And so take hip hop away because hip hop's not the thing. We definitely were uh, felt like we were commissioned by God to go back to our culture and, you know, represent him. So. Yeah, I remember on, I think it was the second album, House of Reps, where there's like that interlude and Deuce is talking mm -hmm. and he goes, but we won't bow down. <laughs> wow. the, the inflection is the inflection. I, I never forgot that inflection, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was real, man, because, like, listen, it was counterculture. And right. it was even counter to the counterculture. Right. Mm. And so, I mean, we, we would go to the church. They weren't having us. We no. were going to the street. They weren't having us. You know what I'm saying? Rocking hard but the place. Lord had yeah. us. You know right. what I'm saying? So that, that was it. So it was never, it was never, it was always a Christian that was in hip hop, a Christian that was at work, a Christian that was at church, a Christian wherever we were in the world. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that like, yeah, we're down with hip hop. No doubt about that. But it wasn't that, okay, we were hip hoppers who happened to be Christians. We were Christians that happened to be hip hoppers. So no matter how you caught us, you're always going to catch Christ. You're always going to see that because the Lord captured our hearts and we, we were serving him. You know, I remember Deuce said, um, I think he said something similar to this in Wells, correct me where I'm wrong. He said, um, he said, when the, um, when the mic is mine, Jesus will be in it every time. I never said mm -hmm. I was the bomb. I mean, I never said I could rhyme. I said Christ was the bomb. That was the whole mentality. Like we were here to big up the Lord. That's what it was about for us. We were so in love with Christ and Christ had so captured our hearts and we wanted to serve him. And we were in a time of, we were in a time of representing. You know what I mean? How's the representative is about representing mm -hmm. what you believe. It was about representing what you was about and keeping it real. Like we were 100 on the Lord and we're still 100 on the Lord and nothing's going to change that. Hey man, that's good. That's good. Oh man, uh, we got some uh, comments, you know, because I, I really believe that uh, you guys' perspective can help really ultimately help people grow in their sanctification from this. New Reformation Apologetic says, This is very helpful for me as a younger evangelist slash street apologist. I need to have God examine my heart and align it with Him more. I needed to hear this. Thanks, guys. Much love. Yeah, Praise Lord. Much love. Much yeah, love. Stay strong, man. Keep, mm. keep going. The, the evidence is on our side. You know what I'm saying? Yo, it depends on who you're listening to and then how far are you willing to go. I mean, at some point, you can choose the sides of the secularists. You can choose the side of the atheists. But there are strong evidences and proof with the Lord. And I'm not going to put down the Bible. The Bible is, in fact, whether it's in question or not, the Bible is, in fact, one of the strongest arguments for the Lord. Uh, the, the Historically, there's the Lord. And, yo, and the very basic level, on a very, very basic level, I've never run across any atheist, any non-believer who has an answer for existence. Like, right. yo, 
like don't tell me about gravity creating something big bang whatever you know space itself is not nothing it exists gravity exists whatever you want to use how do you explain existence apart from the existence of a transcendent god so on a rudimentary level on a foundation level no one has been able to answer that question uh, because philosophically or otherwise you know existence is and that's because god is and he created and did it so and there's other reasons too but yo stay strong my man like oh the lord the lord got it yeah why hmm. is there something rather than nothing hmm. and it's a that's principle right. of sufficient reason so for every effect there's always a cause there is no exception to that if there's an effect there's a cause we may not always know the cause but there's mm -hmm. always a cause for every effect mm -hmm. the universe is the effect what is the cause you could even say existence like you're exactly. saying is the effect what is the cause mm -hmm. exactly exactly and you cannot you can't say like aliens did it as if distance <laughs> you know made the difference nothing from creation from creation can be the creator and you can have mm -hmm. a transcendent god like jesus you know shows up takes on human flesh you know matter of fact you know what i'm saying i think he just brace has something similar to like he always had life he just borrowed the womb you know what i'm saying oh yeah yeah and, yeah yeah and i forget the line exactly one of my favorite like that's probably one of my all-time favorite christian songs now who's the man he absolutely killed that that sounds Love dope today. yeah mm -hmm. yeah but but like yo here though christ was the dude who came you know, as his father would say, if he talked to other prophets, you know what I'm saying, said, yo, I'm going to show up, shows up, does the works of God, talks like God, interacts like God, shows the love and the mercy of God, says, I'm going to lay my life down, lays his life down, picks it back up, just as he said, yo, turns around and goes off, and no other God showed up to say he was lying. No other alien showed up to say, yo, Jesus, you, you lying. Nah, man, this dude demonstrated it. You know what I mean? Even hmm. even those who were um, antagonistic in his day against Christianity, historians, you know what I'm saying, who were, um, uh, you know, non-believing, atheistic historians even wrote about him. And even in how they tried to diss him, it's like, yo, you even in your diss, you can see clearly you're validating him. So, yeah, like, like in the, uh, the Torah, where they say hmm. that he had power from Beelzebub. They're confirming he did supernatural acts, that he, he did something miraculous, and they're just ex trying to explain the source in a different way. Which, by the way, shows how your presuppositions control your outcome, your conclusion. Mm -hmm. Their assumption mm -hmm. is Jesus is not of God, therefore it must be from the devil. Exactly. But their presupposition was wrong. Look at this. You guys might appreciate this. Mike AD says, praise God. God bless you guys. I'm somewhat new to listening to CHH and found you guys a couple of years ago. I listen to Crossmood almost every day. Wow. True gospel rap. And then uh, we got a testimony from a brother. This is a good brother. I've had him on before, the Conscious Chicano. I used to be a strict materialist and agnostic, but realized that there is more than strict materialism. God is the ultimate source and answer to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. I mean, again, just... Go ahead, Wes. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. my bad. I think I no, said ahead, Torah, ahead. but I meant Talbot. Thank you, Christ Central, for correcting me. I think I said Torah. My bad, everyone. I meant Talbot if I said that. My bad. Thank you. Oh, the Talbot, right? Yeah. Right. Everyone, everyone follow yeah. Christ Central. They're, they're like, uh, in a way, the sons of uh, the cross movement or something, at least in my mind, <laughs> the kind of, you know, picking up mm. the torch. Mm. And, uh, you know, in a way, you know, I t one time I said this uh, to one of my buddies, I said, speaking of that type of thing, I said, you know, it's funny, uh, Brady now, you know, he, there's all these reviews and people like critiquing and reviewing. And I said, in a way, he's fighting his sons, hmm. Me meaning like a lot of yeah. us doing these videos now are partially products of if, if him and your guys like a not, not like a big part of why we're doing it looked into these right. things this way. It's I'm like Brady is fighting his children. Right. It's his children. That's that come, part of, you know, that's part of the. The thing I was trying to say early where a man spent 30 years going so hard on so much. I I, I caught the the session that you had with him, Vocab, where you were like, bro, I got this from you. Like, you would have, like, right. and that's part of the truth is, like, people's lives have actually been transformed through those 30 years of proclaiming the gospel. And so now, all of a sudden, like I said, now you, you turn around and you come with this other thing. Like we all have, that's one of the other things we all have had where this is what I say. You read a, a passage earlier. You said uh, it was a passage where 
he kind of glossed over. He said, yeah, and so when I repented and when I, you know, believed in salvation and, and the fact that I was a sinner, I felt like those parts of the book were really, really glossed over and generalized. Like, I was almost like, man, why didn't he spend more time talking about, and I never, I don't hear him talking about the thing that we all have in common. All of us have this point where we're like, yo, I came to the end of myself and I had an inner witness. Like the Bible was preached and it spoke to my inner conscience that only God gives. And I realized I too am a sinner. And not only did you do that vocab, Cleve, you did that. I've been to to Scotland and I met a man, I, he had the same thing, the same confession and just mm -hmm. confessions of transformation. And then the Lord changed my life. So sanctification mm -hmm. takes place. And we all have that same, you know, thing. I just felt like, man, that was, there was something about that that just doesn't smell right. I don't hear that coming from him. I don't know if I have the answers for it all, but that's something that is common in the, in the Christian mm -hmm. disciple salvation, sanctification and discipleship. We come to that point where we have an inner witness. We have an external witness. We have a general revelation. Why do we know there's a God? Because we look around and we can see it in his creation. And we have a mm -hmm. special revelation where it comes down to, yeah, that inner witness. Like, what? Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing. He keeps saying stuff like, if, we, if I say I had an inner witness along with the fact that I read the Bible and find it to be true, you can't prove that. <laughs> well, you can't disprove it either. Like, you, can't, you don't get to diminish my testimony just because you say I can't prove it because... The truth is God don't jump through our hoops, bro. He doesn't play that game. He 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 calls people to himself on his own terms. It's not some like like I think he was saying in the book, so I asked God, I told him if you such like I'm like, yo, nobody gets to play that game with God. That's that's problematic to me. So anyway, and I'm trying to I'm sorry if I'm a little I'm I'm trying to this is difficult. Well yeah, it's uh not not easy, you know. I I think maybe, you know, probably sometimes you didn't want to necessarily talk about it. But, you know, the first time you did talk about it, <clears throat> when you first made the video, yeah. I think that helped a lot of people. Yeah. And hopefully this does it, it does as well. You know, when we go through chapter one, um, he he talks about that and what he did with y'all. And then he talks about going into seminary. Going into seminary, right? Westminster, which if you guys, to the audience, those who don't know, Westminster is a pretty elite level seminary known for having a real, real high academic standard. Um, uh, maybe even the best as far as um, like evangelical world goes. You know, we're not talking about Princeton Theological Seminary or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he talks about these discussions he was having. Uh, and and uh, it was pretty interesting. You know, he, he mentioned specific names of specific professors, specific books and stuff like that. And then when he gets to page nine, he says, here's his questions initially. What about the passages in Genesis 1 that conflict with aspects of reality that we can easily observe? Should we consider them revelation from God? What about the seeming inconsistencies or contradictions between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2? Does this challenge our literal understanding of either passage? Number three, there are parts of Genesis 1 and 2 that seem to be very much tied to historical and cultural context, serving the purposes of the author and original audience, but not necessarily today's audience. If this is so, how literally should we take these texts? So he's saying those are questions that, you know, got brought up in in, in issues are raised up in school and then those are questions he wanted to talk about and then really a lot of the book is kind of kind of from that you know it's a lot of genesis one contradicts genesis two evolution is true creation answers aren't good it's all that kind of stuff from there mm -hmm. um so when you got to that part of the book you know because it's very autobiographical but that's where it starts to get into like well let's look at this biblical data now he he unveils it further in chapters but just looking at the little sections where he does bring up like biblical conflict as far as you know his understanding um is that stuff you guys have talked about before is it was it surprising to hear or read or is it stuff that you've wrestled with i mean what was your some of your reaction to some of those initial thoughts he had no, it's funny because early on when he was like beginning to, you know, there was this period where Brady was talking about what was coming. He had made his, you know, his new profession that he was walking away from the faith. And then, but he never really gave us much meat right. on those bones as to what. And uh, 
I remember beginning to, he started leaking a little bit of it out. And I was like, and again, for me, this was new coming from him. It wasn't that we haven't talked about some of the classic, um, you know, challenges, Bible challenges and stuff like that. I mean, some of these guys have been, you know, a lot of them, I have no letters behind my name. I haven't been to seminary nor Bible college. I would be somebody who's, who looks to like show myself approved as somebody who studies. Uh, but I find myself not after the order of Gamaliel, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have been him. I would have been one of the regular guys, the fisher fishermen. Like I'm okay and comfortable being a fisherman or a tax collector. Um, but, um, dang, I feel like I lost myself. Sorry. Well, you're saying uh, you're, you feel like you're a little more Peter than Paul. Right. But it was more about what I felt like he was, Ooh, where we start? Well, you know, he's saying here's contradictions in Genesis. So let me look into this. Oh, so you asked the question about, had we heard that before? I hadn't other than, like I said, some of the classic stuff, but I had told him at that time when he started leaking it, like, this sounds like old hat. Like, you keep talking like you getting ready to bring something that the world has never heard. You know what I mean? Like, and at a, early on, I got the sense like, yo, this is some of the old classic stuff. Genesis 1, Genesis 2. Like, yeah, like, and there's answers for it. I love it. Like, I think William Mendoza, wait, and I'm so old now, like, I know so many Christian rappers. I lose what groups they were. Is William Mendoza in Christ Centric? Uh, he's on the label. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The so apologist. William Mendoza yeah. put up a post and said, Brady, you saying there's no answers for this. There's answers, but you just chose not to believe them. And so for me, I think, you know, when I read those types of things, I, I kind of conclude the same thing. He says there's no answers. And yeah, it may have brought him some problems. These were kind of like he wasn't wrestling with this the whole time that we were together. Or he didn't. If he was, he wasn't necessarily letting it out in the way that he he has now. So, yeah, you, you would concur with that earthquake. Yeah, I would. I would. And I don't know how. I'm probably the last one to know um, about what he was struggling with, but I don't know how far back that struggle began and um, to where CM was invited to be a part of that or discussions about that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't but, know. That we but were. here's the deal. Something I know you would remember. Like, this just isn't us, like, seeing each other here and there and I'll see you next month. This is us spending... Oh yeah, weeks yeah. and weeks and weeks on tour buses and in hotels and in on planes, like talking about all kinds of stuff and the scripture a lot, like bringing up you know uh, issues and problems. Do you ever look at this verse? You ever look? Oh, such and such says this about like this would have come out like and so yeah. I'm just saying, I'm not knocking him for that. I'm just saying it's it's surprising, it's confusing sometimes. Yeah. Well, I'm saying that because from what I remember, like the issue started happening in seminary. You know what I'm saying? And so this is kind mm -hmm. of where the separation went down. And so right. I'm saying. So cross that movement that was, was over at that time. I think I tried to right. clarify that cross movement right. was over. Right. So, yeah, that would have been a period where everybody was kind of away in their worlds. And I know that I know I hadn't I didn't see Brady a lot during the time he was in seminary, other than like the times we'd be on the phone or on a Zoom or you know, in the threads and stuff like that. I didn't see Brady a lot. If I came to town, we would get together or whatever. But, yeah. Yeah, and I would say, like, listen, you know, one thing I would caution people, and that's not what anybody's saying here, is you run across people who want to tell you why he's defected in that, like, man, he must have been hurt in the church or somebody must have did something wrong or it must be this. Go, okay, well, listen, if, if he's saying, you know, uh, it's this reason or that reason, you got to give him the space to say that and believe him. Don't try to put your own thing in on it. Um, mm -hmm. With that said, I will say that there are answers. Like Wells is saying, who are you going to listen to? And, you know, how far do you want to go down that road? You know what I'm saying? Because um, there are people that will make a statement. And, and understand, science is fluid. In my mind, science is just uncovering. You're not discovering anything. You're uncovering what God already did. You know what I'm saying now? Is that a presupposition? Yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I think it's supported. 
Um, we see it, you know, again, in all the different uh, genres that are there. But ultimately, you choose where you want to land. Who are you giving your ear to? You know what I'm saying? And I think it, it bears itself out. You know, at one point in time, you know, the Bible was criticized, for example, man, there's a serpent. There's a serpent with legs, but we can't talk. Well, then they find one in Brazil. And the fossilized remains of one in Brazil. Okay, bet. Well, there's no such place as Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, then they find Sodom and Gomorrah. And the sulfur that's there is is more pure than any other naturally occurring sulfur anywhere else. The Bible calls it brimstone. Oh, well, we don't know where the well, Mount Sinai is until they find it. Jabal El Laws in Saudi Arabia. And we see the burnt mountaintop. You know, we found the split rock at Horeb. I'm just simply saying... Um, you know, they found evidence of Pontius Pilate. As we continue to dig and as we continue to really research, then the Bible is affirmed. It's affirmed. Even if you don't want to, even if you want to move away from it, literally, there's so many other areas that, that it affirms itself. Um, and, you know, I'm just simply saying, ultimately, what are you listening to and where do you choose to land? You know, to me, again, I, I'm, I'm not a theistic evolutionist. I'm not an evolutionist. I have my reasons why. And, and other people speak to that to the book, so I won't go into it. But I just I just believe that the God of the Bible has spoken and he has affirmed it. And if you just look long enough, um, research the researcher's research, <laughs> then you'll you'll kind of see that uh, you'll land where, you know, a, a good place to put your faith in Christ and have evidence to back it up. Amen. That's good. Um, you know, there's some other things I want to turn the book, but before I just read different quotes that I want to turn to, Sonic, Earthquake, maybe some quotes that caught your attention, or in general, you know, how are you responding to what you're reading in the book, Let There Be Gaslight by Brady Goodwin Jr. here? Yeah. I think for me, I think you've hit on a lot of the quotes from Chapter 1. I think once you get behind chapter one, I think there's a lot of uh, heavy uh, arguments that I think I'm more comfortable leaving to you guys, the apologist. Um, and so I know that that's been happening and more of that is coming. Um, so I think you've hit on a lot of the ones that really caught me by surprise, the ones about popularity and you know just kind of some of his early coming to the Lord and going in the seminary and that stuff. Um, I think one thing I will say that I think is emerging, that I, I'm sensing is emerging from um, the book, as well as what I keep hearing probably from him online, is something that I see in a lot of other places. Um, and it's this idea that in order for the Bible to be real, it needs to have a more credible witness like it keep, I just keep hearing that and, and we keep talking about his declarations about how science has proven this and you know once you really look at reality properly how science has and it's almost like you know the Bible can't stand on its own but I've been encouraged over the past couple of days there was a there's this pat the passage classic passage of Lazarus and the rich man that just rocked me recently and it's just this idea that you know there was Lazarus, uh, who was uh, this poor man laying outside of the, and forgive me, y'all, I'm, I'm paraphrasing my, I would read it, but my other, uh, my, my computer I was reading went down. So, uh, but laying outside this gate, and it's like this rich man who lives sumptuously, dressed well, doesn't even pay attention to him. Um, and this is Jesus giving this parable. And it's interesting because a lot of Jesus's parables they usually don't name a person. It's usually like this general like thing. But this person's name is Lazarus. And I think I had studied one time that it was like a composite word, Eleazar, which is God helps. So this idea that this Lazarus is dependent wholly on Jesus. He doesn't have anything else. And then the story takes a turn and this is Jesus telling this story. And Jesus says, and then almost like in a twinkling of an eye, they both die. One goes to Abraham's bosom and one, it says, and opening his eyes in Hades or in hell and in torment. Um, I think Jesus often gets to the issue. I'm saying this to hopefully encourage somebody too. like this issue that Brady is dealing with is no light issue. This is 
eternity at stake. I think Jesus lays it out well. He gets to it quickly. They both die and immediately they opening their eyes, one in, in Abraham's bosom and one in Hades, in hell, and he's in torment. And then quickly he begins to start to reason with Abraham. Hey, have Lazarus dip his finger in water or somebody dip their finger in water and put it on my tongue. And quickly, you know, uh, Abraham makes the case that, yo, there's a chasm between us. There's, there's such a great distance between where you are and where we are. Like, and it's not just two different realities. Jesus lets us into this new realm, this, this, this other realm, but it's permanent. Like there's no way that that could happen. And then he goes on to his next plea, which is, well, send somebody back to, you know, tell my family so that I can, you know, so that they won't come here. They won't make the same mistake that I did. And Abraham says, no, they have Moses and they have the prophets. And that is profound coming from our Lord Jesus. So in other words, there's nobody, Michael Jackson's not coming, Kanye's not coming, there's no other credible, whatever you're, no scientist is gonna come. Good. They have it already. <laughs> they have the law and the prophets. They have the word of God, and that's what will stand the test of time. And he says, no, you don't understand, Abraham. If you send somebody back from the dead, if you send, like, what more credibility could you have? Send somebody back from the dead, then they'll believe. He says, no. There's going to be no other credible witness. It's the Bible. It's the it's Moses and the prophets is what we have. He says, even if somebody came back from the dead, they wouldn't believe. And the truth is, somebody did come back from the dead. Our Lord Christ did. He's the one telling the story. And I don't know. I just want to encourage people about that. If you're having questions and doubts about maybe Jesus, maybe the Bible, maybe... Christ, the one who you place your faith and trust in, is faithful, and he said it already. Like, there's nothing new. He doesn't play those games. We'll jump through this scientific hoop, then I'll believe. We'll jump through this other hoop that satisfied me, and then I'll believe. He doesn't play that game with us. He says, I've given you all that you have. He even told the, the, the leaders of his day, y'all want a sign? The only sign y'all going to get is the sign of Jonah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. Like, he doesn't play those games. He's given us enough. The Bible is enough to save us, to sanctify us. The Holy Spirit will seal us to the day of redemption and we'll be with our Lord. I mean, Amen. that's all we need. Amen. That's good. I am that I am. Shout out mm -hmm. to the live chat. We got a couple super chatters. Ham Sunshine, thank you very much. Harry o. Johnson, thank you very much. And also Righteous Through Christ. Sorry, I didn't get to you guys sooner. Righteous Through Christ sharing a couple of verses that are relevant. Romans 121. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts. Foolish heart was darkened. And also Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do the those things which are not proper. So thank you very much for those those verses as well, and to the super chat as well. Um, it's a little helpful. It's helpful. Now, with that, can I show you guys something uh, here? I want to show you. I want to switch over here. Give me a second here uh, on social media here. Just give me a second uh, to set this up here. Because um, I, I told you that I wanted to get some kind of response. And you've mentioned it in passing, but to some of the kind of stuff that he posts on posts on uh, social media. So I'm going to read this one. and Because this is like along with the book. It's almost like the, the campaign along with it. I don't know how to properly say it. But, but let me show everyone what it, what it says here. This is two days ago on uh, his Facebook. Y'all crazy. I got two groups of Christians. One swearing that early Genesis is only meant to be taken literarily, not literally. How that doesn't destroy Paul's doctrine of sin is anybody's guess, and everyone is guessing. The other swears that Genesis can and must be taken literally, or else the rest of the biblical revelation becomes undone. How this doesn't conflict with modern science on what we know about the world is anybody's guess. And everyone is guessing. 
And y'all want me to believe and preach this to others? Get y'all's story straight and we'll see. Meanwhile, I'm content to accept that an all-wise God could and would do a better job at revealing itself to multiple generations at the same time than this. And if it could not or would not, it is not a being that is worthy of worship. Can you respond to that, Tonic? Or if you don't want to respond to that in particular, maybe just as social media in general, because I'm not trying to, you know. Yeah, it's it's difficult. I mean, I weep over this stuff. Like, I, uh, it's difficult. And not only is it difficult, not only do I weep, I worry about Brady because I think he's, like, he's getting to the point where he's so brash and he's so mocking of our Lord who really doesn't play that. Like, again, he's gracious, he's forgiving, he's long-suffering, but he's also just, and he won't be mocked. And so sometimes I'm, I'm in real fear for Brady in terms of the things he says. And uh, I mean, it's broken the heart of my family and my wife. Like, we weep over these things. I, I, uh, early on, I tried to say to him, bro, like, okay, you don't believe, but do you have to be this? Sometimes I can't even find the right words, but... Um, like mili- yeah, I don't know mili- res- militant and you're scoffing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know how to respond to it. You know, I feel like he says, you know, it doesn't take the God of the Bible to be moral and to be ethical and to be, you know, <laughs> grateful and all these different things. And... Uh, I think he bears out the evidence. Like, I, I have no other thing to believe other than all of his restraints are off. So he feels like I can do whatever I want. I can be profane. I can, you know, I can say what I want. I mean, I can only imagine what else, you know, his heart may be doing just because our hearts are sinful. And so, um, again, I'm not trying to put anything on him. I, I, maybe I should just say I I weep over this stuff. And I think, you know, I don't know. Yeah, let's let's. I mean, honestly, everyone, we're interacting with this content, but pray for Brady. Mm-hmm. Earthquake, yeah. uh, your what's your reaction been to some of his the social media posts? Well, the first thing for me is sadness um, to see the depart because again, uh, the love that you have for him. Uh, but then I'm offended too because the love I have for Christ. So clearly, it, again, affirming the Bible, you know, he comes to put father against the son and mother against daughter, you know, like you know, that's what happens, right? Um, I'm looking at what his, uh, his truth is, if you will, and that would be science. You know, science now has, he's so regarded it, not realizing, well, I don't want to say he doesn't realize it, but in my opinion, science is so fluid. Um, you know, they, they often have to retract and take a step forward, two steps back. And again, right. so I, I don't, I, not that I don't rely on certain things, there's certain been advanced in medicine and those types of things. And, and there has been some, some, some good things, but to, to look at um, certain parts of science and make that your worldview, I think it's, it's crazy. And I, and again, without going real crazy again, um, Unity does not necessarily have to be uniformity. You know what I mean? So everybody doesn't have to agree to everything. Now, when you talk about whether you're speaking about it literarily or literally, yes, I think, you know, there is a consensus and a general understanding. Um, But understand that everybody's not going to be on the same level and have the same understanding. You know, people who are learning basic math in preschool and kindergarten, first grade are not going to have the same understanding of physics and calculus and trigonometry for people who've gone on further. And so people may say different things that might be different and seem contrary, but they're not. Um, Ultimately, we're talking about truth. And Jesus said that I am the way and the truth and the life, right? So he's not saying I have it, he says I am it. And I think when you discover the Lord and when you go in, you'll see that. Um, Some comments I think are just kind of makes me scratch my head. There was a comment one time and, you know, there was a, a, a post about the new telescope and it talked about, well, the people who wrote the scriptures, they couldn't envision 
um, how the, the depth of space and what we see and what we know because what we're seeing. So they didn't, when they thought of heaven, they didn't necessarily see that, you know, so did they, you know, were they considering that when they say God did this or did that as if somehow because they didn't understand it all that it just diminished the word. And I was like, that sounds so crazy to me. It, it was so illogical because flip it this way. They did not necessarily know DNA. They didn't necessarily know the the you know the 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 different blood types they didn't necessarily know the spleen <clears throat> uh, in fact we ourselves until not too long ago even understood what the appendix was for uh, you know we didn't they didn't have they didn't know all those things internally and couldn't see it but does that mean that they did not um attribute the creation of it to god well of course they did you know what i'm saying they say men and women and all creation belongs to god so just because they weren't able to see it all doesn't mean that they didn't include that as if you know god you know is limited by man's you know limitness no so again you know i just think that um some things sound really good but they end up sounding so crazy to me and i would imagine that the more he and others you know go into that that they're gonna think you know i probably sound crazy so uh you know you just pray you trust the lord um, and I think that, again, as we continue to um, look, I think the God of the Bible is going to receive, you know, reveal himself. And there's other areas I haven't touched on, like, you know, different things like, um, you know, prophecy, because he's one of the proofs that you have is God says that, you know, I will tell you the end from the beginning. In fact, he says that I'm God, there is none else, and I will tell you the end from the beginning. Now, you can say some of this is revisionist history. Um, but what do you what do you do with the stuff that's popping off now? Like again, God will continue to affirm and um, and confirm. You know what I'm saying? He will he will uh, he will continue to affirm um, the believer and confirm the truth of what he said. So, um, you know, I, I just I just pray, yo, honestly. Hey Amen. I'm just gonna read one other comment from his social media, and then we'll go back to just I'll take this off the screen, which is he says this: I'm too nice to Christians. My man Carlos Newton keeps telling me I'm too compassionate towards Christians to not still be one myself. Well, if I have to respond to some of these urban apologists dishonestly reviewing my book, they are either liars or lazy or just pure incompetent. Carlos will get to see the version of me that he's been anticipating. I won't have calls out for all Christians, just the sneaky, sneaky ones. <laughs> what? Yeah, you know, again, um, you know, he... he you know, obviously he felt offended. You give him room for that. You know what I'm saying? I'd say probably the best way to, to approach that is to, okay, there's a song that was created um, that I think was one of the first ones that the whole crew got together. I was I was after that day, but it was called um, Test It. You know what I'm saying? Um, yep. So, yo, put it on the table and let's test it. You know, I think there's room to, um, to do it in a way that is honoring um, the character of Christ for those that believe and honoring what conceivably is good um, character um, for the non-believer. Yo, you know, come on, talk to, you know, these people, go on there and explain, show where, you know, have the discussion, have the, have the talk, you know what I'm saying? Let's bring it out and present it, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, and just do it that way. Uh, I won't go into, you know, ridiculing him. I won't go into uh, ridiculing others or even mocking or even, you know, that, uh, nah, man, I love my man. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad. And, uh, it's just prayerfully we can come. If so, be it, come to the table. Let's have a discussion. Let's bring it out, um, you know, together and let's explore, let's travel. You know what I'm saying? And understand that there's other people that are watching. You know, so let's 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 at least with us present it in a way that's that's God honoring and fruitful um, to the body. So, Amen, Amen. Would, Let me flip, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just flipping this back over yeah, here. Please, I was going to say, I don't know if people remember before that post I did right after Brady's, uh, you know, confession. I had put out something else called. The Legend of Black Flowers, where I was just talking about my love for Brady and for Fanatic and the times that we spent together. I remember the times when it was just him and I, like, you know, with seven of us, you know, it was 
you know, some of us had closer relationships than others, or you get with this one and then you wait to see the time when you could spend with somebody else. But he and I got together frequently. He would meet. I had a job at Rutgers University. I used to get off at like one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I would come out of there and Brady would be there. And we would go to IHOP and like eat till like four in the morning or whatever. We have all these deep discussions. We play, you know, have all this time together. I say only all of that just to say, like when I hear stuff like this, I'm telling y'all, I don't know who that is. Yeah. He wasn't like that. He was not like that. This new, mean, tough Brady, like, he wasn't like that. And that's what I'm saying. I don't know if, like, his new yeah, position, like I said, yeah, just think about it. You don't have a, what I would say, he disagrees when I say this to him. You don't have a kind of moral compass grounded in the in, in the one true God anymore. You, I feel like you just feel like you could do whatever. And maybe he does, but... I feel like that's the results I'm seeing. Like, I don't know who that person is because he was not like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I don't know. I'm I'm saddened again by that. That's all I can say. Um, I've actually tried to stay clear of, other than trying to, you know, continue to contribute and, and encourage others, it's gotten to be, gotten to be too much for me. Mm-hmm. Other than watching this, I guess this new round now where, you know, you guys are going to be going back and forth with him as apologists. You know, I, I like watching some of that, but it's it's too much to watch. Like it's too. When I see it, I'm just like I I, I dread reading it because, like I said, I don't know who that is. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's painful for like the outsiders like us, but I, I can't right. I can't re- can't really imagine like for you yeah. you guys. You know, it's a whole other yeah. level. The Legend of Black Flower. Where where can I? Is that on your Facebook? Where is that? Should have been on my Facebook. Okay, yeah. I'll take a look. And if people do want to video, with people, I'm gonna look for that. Uh, and if people do want to follow, um, is it a poem or a video or what is it a? I think it's a, a video. Song? Okay. All right, I'll yeah. take a look. I'll take a look for it. Yeah. If people do want to um, follow the stuff that you have at Instacar Media or stuff like that, where can people, you know, keep yeah, track you of you these days? Instacarmedia.com is a place where. You know, that's just this the company website. You'll find a lot of what we've been up to um, and more to come. Uh, I think if you search Issachar Media on YouTube, there's a YouTube page there that has uh, some of the, I guess, our early contributions, Uncle Johnny and a professor, which I think some of those things we did about two seasons of that, me and uh, the ambassador, I think that's timeless mm-hmm. stuff there. So mm-hmm. um, check that out as well. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I will. Um, I want to let you guys, I know we didn't get to all of our questions or all the book. Anything else in the book or some of the questions that I had that we may didn't get to that you want to touch on? And then I want to see if the audience has a few and then we'll we'll close out there. Listen, audience, if you want to ask a question, put a capital Q with a colon and the question mark at the end and I'll try to get to it. But, but Earthquake, let me make sure that you say anything you want to say before we go. And obviously I'll talk to you guys anytime if you want to be on this this spot or whatever. Um I mean, I wish I was facilitating something different, uh, facilitating a response to, you know, Christian hip hop artists that you always looked up to, not just is cr- not just as creative, but like inspirational, you know, for using the art in an intellectual theological way, is a strange thing, but. Uh, <sighs> You know, Josh Harris, you know, he left the faith. I don't think he wrote a book on it. So it's just this, it's mm. a unique thing. We're in this unique time, and I feel like we got to say something. Now, your guys is a little more personal. You're kind of reacting to Chapter 1 and some of the personal things. But, you know, that's why this is going on. But uh, with that f- tonic earthquake, earthquake, yeah, yeah, get, yeah. It, so, get it off so the chest. Listen, listen like real talk uh, about that, when I – first heard about the announcement I, I i said to some i was like yo we're gonna see something you know we're gonna see more if you think about it there was nothing in his life that 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 said i don't teach people that i don't proclaim what i believe in that i don't engage that's his person that's his personality so it's not surprising to me for him to write a book he was already writing books so it stands to reason that you know he's going to write a book i'm hurt by that i'm like dang like because like the offense that it is to christ you know what i'm saying he knows that you know but he doesn't believe it any longer so okay 
he's going to put it out there. But there's nothing that he's done before that isn't in line in terms of, uh, you know, engaging social media, you know, putting stuff out there, engaging people. That's what he, that's who he's been. So I would I would think that that's who we would continue to be. But like, that's a different person. Brady was very, com- you know, he was compassionate to people. As far as I remember, you always saw him, you know, trying to scoop up some young cats, pour into them or, you know, personally interactions with other people, you know, things I won't talk about that he was trying to be helpful to. He, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't that like vindictive dude. In fact, it would seem that he would go out of his way to be kind. Like that's just, just what he was. I mean, you know what I mean? You're talking about a guy when he graduated high school purposely didn't um, apply to colleges. Um, not that he wasn't able to, but because he wanted to leave um the slate open for the Lord to put whatever he wanted to, you know, put there on his plate and then saw that man. I remember talking about when he came to Lancaster Bible College, you know, um, something to the effect. Don't get me. You know, I, I may have the story wrong, but something to the effect of, well, he went to meet them there and he really couldn't, you know, he had to arrange the class a certain way. And one person said, well, listen, I can't help you with the financial aspect of it, but I can help you with the arrangement in the classes so we can do X, Y and Z. And then he ended up speaking to the finance department. They said, well, I can't really help with the arrangement of classes and stuff, but I can help you with the finances. You know what I mean? And it was just an affirmation, again, of the Lord at work in his life. So to see that flip now to what well, all those things become coincidences, all those things now become happenstance because, oh, well, you know, other people have that testimony as if God would be limited to, you know, ministering to people in a certain way that would only line up with how we think. You know, God draws people, he attracts people, and he puts people in the best place for them to encounter him. So, again, to see where that is today is kind of, it's... Cleve, I got a little twist on what you said about him writing the book and kind of doing the way he's doing. Like, because then I talked to him about this. I'm like, man, okay, you don't believe, but I don't understand why you have this special feeling that you feel like you got to try to lead everybody you led to the Lord mm. back out of the mm. kingdom. And he yeah. said to me, you know me, Wells, you know me, man. I always been somebody who proclaimed truth. I'm always, you know, going to proclaim what I believe. And I said to him, I said, yeah, Brady, but you had a mandate to do that in the gospel. You had the Great Commission mandating you to be this proclaimer of this great truth and shout it from the rooftops. There's no mandate for you now. Like now that you've let it go, like, and so I really still don't understand that. Like I, I don't understand. I don't think he he doesn't like this whole idea that I've been always like that. I think he got that from the gospel. I don't think he was like this 16 year old dude who just went around proclaiming. I think once he encountered the gospel that that uh he discovered the, the, the call that maybe God had for him, but um mm. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh it's it's a, it's a I mean everything about it's Tricky. tough. We're yeah. we're um you know, we got a playlist in which a lot of this has been responded to and uh there's still some more coming and so uh, this has been definitely you know, one of the uh unique yeah, probably you know most unique one getting your guys' perspective, which I really appreciate, and uh, that's that's very I just appreciate and just uh, your guys' humility and compassion that that you show. A couple questions: Captain Crunch cereal, is there a way to help protect Christians that go to seminary and come back dead in their faith? <laughs> yes, yeah, first of all, let's not let's not <laughs> let's not convict seminary because even in his book he says, you know, he says that other people went and they drew very different conclusions so i think that says a lot about the individual as a as opposed to the seminary school you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. now should you have your heart and mind set yes and seminary will challenge you and there are those that struggle with that but i don't know that we could use this as a blanket way to say that seminary is bad because seminaries produce uh, great people you know what i'm saying and ambassador who's phenomenal dude's crazy with it he went to seminary. He went to Lancaster Bible College. And I feel like, like Brady went there because Deuce went there first. And then Deuce went to um, Dow- Dallas Theological Seminary. Yo, that cat is crazy with it. Listen to him. He's bananas. Like, hey, yo, there's some stuff that I've heard this cat say on stage that, man, like, it's just crazy. So I don't necessarily know that seminary is a bad thing. 
I just think you really have to balance your approach and understand the scripture. And remember this, to study everything about the Bible, to know the genres, to know the the narrative type scenes, to be able to know the repetition and the chiasms and the inclusios and all the different things in the scriptures and to not open your heart to the one who stands at the door and knocks, you've missed it. The point is a relationship. The Bible is here for us to establish the relationship with Christ and to share that with others. D.A. Carson, yo, we're breakers, showing other breakers where the bread of life is. So the point of that, all that study is to know him. So if you're doing all that and you're not knowing him, you're, you've missed the whole purpose of it all. If I could say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, as, as the host, I'm not obviously not a member of Crossroom Wind, but just as a host, uh, you know, I, I went to seminary. I, I went to Phoenix Seminary, got a master's. Mm. I went to um, uh, uh, Talbot School of Theology in, in L.A. and did three years residency there in a program and took one class uh, at an extension of Trinity with D.A. Carson. That was a Old Testament, uh, New Testament use of the Old Testament. That was that was the summer class. And saying all that to say this is that um, I remember encountering all kinds of new things between what they would assign us for reading because, you know, in in the world, they'll they'll say that they want you to get this broad view and stuff. But with a lot of of, of non Christian education, uh, from what I've seen, it's still within a parameter of secular thought, and it's like that sometimes is, isn't even fully explored. It's like it, but but it, but the, but at but at seminary, my professors went out of their way, especially some of them like Grudem, to assign people that no one that you, that he didn't agree with. It was like we had more reading of people we didn't agree with than people that we did agree with, and then uh, all kinds of different challenges you're exposed to, um, even letting people co-host or co-teach a class that would be like an outsider that 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 it would be somebody who would have a different kind of view, and so. My point is by saying all that, you're get, you encounter challenges, and and I saw some people in seminary. I saw this where they would get really rocked by certain new concepts or things like, "Wait, what?" And I remember having my mind blown plenty of times, but I remember how exciting it was. Like, mm. and I think a lot of it is your presupposition. I really, I, I don't know how it works, but there's something about going in there like a pit bull. Like, I'm gonna find the answer. I'm sticking with Jesus no matter what. You know, I hold on. Versus like, you're about to get swayed and rocked. And I, I did see people, and I'm like, yo, guys, we're in graduate school. Like, you should. I, I just felt like you should be more like. St- steady in this thing where you're invigorated like oh here's something to, to tackle and i would go down to the library and it was some new thing and i would check out all these books that were not assigned books that were not for the class because we would just touch on that class but i would get excited and the librarians are like do you have a project i'm like yeah but this isn't for that this is for the li-. so the librarians really grew to love me because i was always checking stuff out my point is i know there's a lot of students like that i'm not saying like only one but it to me, seminary was one of the most faith-inducing times, despite all the different. And so it's, I did see people get rocked like that, and I don't know who's walked away or left. You know, I don't know all that kind of thing. But it's like if someone would have said, "Which one's Brady going to be?" If someone asked me, "He's going to Westminster." I'd be like, "Oh, Brady's. He's going to be the guy who's like, I'm going to get this and go deeper, and I'm excited." But it's wild. He, he, it was the other way, where oh, questions in Genesis, wobble, 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 fall. Dang. But uh, he's still breathing, you know, and so we don't know the end of his story. We don't know the end of the story, and so everyone pray for Brady, and 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 uh, and all that. And uh, and he does have a. If anytime he wants to come on and talk with me, or or anybody help me, if he wants me to facilitate it, uh, I'll I can do that too. Final words, brothers. I appreciate your time. We didn't. We don't have time to get to all these questions in the audience, but um, anything you want to say before we dip out. I would just encourage people. This is a dark time uh, in every way, and it's more. It's not just dark because of what's transpired with Brady, but we're up against a lot as the church. Like as you guys know, especially after the pandemic, like people aren't coming back to the church. There's been political things that have divided us as the church. Like I think this is going to be a really, really challenging time beyond Brady. But I would encourage you to stand firm. 
um, to understand, spend time, like Cleve says, spend time getting to know the true and living God and his son through his son and do that through the Bible. The Bible is trustworthy. Jesus told us that it was, it'd be easier for the earth and the heavens to pass away than for one dot to be made void from, from the word. And so Brady's book won't void the Bible or the God of the Bible. Uh, Brady won't topple our faith. Um, we're continuing to pray for Brady and hope that he joins us too because um, uh, we know that Christ is coming back one day to redeem all things and to bring us where he is. He's prepared a place for us. So be encouraged by that. Even despite the darkness, you know, look to the light and be encouraged. Hey, thank you, brother. And thank you for hopping on and all that. Greatly appreciate it, Tonic. Thank mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thanks for having me. Earthquake, shake it up. Yeah, man. So... <clears throat> Yo, God is here for it, yo. Like, who are we talking about here? You know what I mean? Tozer said, yo, what, sometimes what we don't say about God is, 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 is more important than what we do say. You know what I mean? So everybody stand up, have your voice, represent the Lord. He's here for it. Um, let me say it this way. This is kind of a different way to say it, but it's true. We start looking at the communicable attributes of God, right? Like he's, he's, he's eternal, it has to do with length of time, right? Uh, infinite is the depth of it. You know what I'm saying? Two separate things, right? Um, and he's um, he's all powerful, right? His attributes are not this plus this or this times this. It is exponential. So it's not that he's just eternal. He is omni om omnipotently, infinitely eternal. You know what I'm saying? And you can just add on and tack on all the rest of them. And then as you understand, it becomes mind blowing because he's omnipresently, omnisciently, <laughs> infinitely eternal. You know what I'm saying? And when you apply to the grace or to his mercy, you add all of those other things exponentially to who he is. My point, this isn't new to God. This isn't, this isn't something like God can't stand. Like he, all of a sudden he's diminished now because a man or men don't understand him he's infinite like how in the world are we going to understand him he's revealing himself and has to deduce it so that we can comprehend it and then go after all of that christ walked talked lived um died resurrected exalt and is coming back y'all he's real you can do the historical research and you can go outside the bible and find evidence for him and evidence for his miracles and know that yo that one right there he's not the real one he's the only one so Amen. don't let that don't let it rock you just like like vocab said just make let yo just let it let you go deeper and um and you know you'll find that the lord god is there so amen that's good know. Well, thanks for being on, and uh, it's been awesome talking to you behind the scenes. You telling me all the behind the scenes stories of how you found this sample or flip this or where this yeah, snare. Can it, bro. You can get it, yo. It's hey, crazy. you straight up laughing. We talked about shock, man. I was like, oh man, that was just so bugged out because um, Brady was on the hook of that, and I remember being in the studio with him, and he and he went over the whole thing. Like, we coming with the shot, we doing with the shot, and the way he did shock. I took out his voice to shock, and he wasn't feeling it. He didn't like, yo, man, you gonna take it out. He didn't like that, but I took it out, and it actually became hyper that way. And you know, the the whole um, the 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 snare, I mean, the hi hat stuff that uh, we did on that particular record. You know, I had a, a headphone, and I put it in my mixer, and I had an MPC sixty two, and I put it in my mixer. Oh no, actually, I put it directly into the MPC on the headphones of my, you know, of, that I had. I just did the. Yeah, you're like sample. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly, it's sample, and it was Wells that said, "Yo, it sounds like you're saying shock." And the rest is history, man. That dude went bananas on it, but that was that was a classic one, man. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and I love just seeing how Brady and Wells or Fanatic and Tonic would go back and forth on stage. You know, doing that, it was just it was it was nice. Spanking. So, that's my man. I love him, man. Yeah, go real talk. Classic, so, yeah, yeah. classic material, for sure, hundred yes, percent. You guys sir. still check out Cross Movement. You guys, if you haven't heard them, I know a lot of you have here, but some of you haven't. Check out Cross Movement. I mean, you'll be blessed with 
uh, with everything about it. Uh, you definitely want to check them out if you're unaware. And uh, it's some real, real dope stuff. And maybe we'll, sometime we'll have you guys on and talk about stories behind the scenes. You know? Yo, let's get it. Yo, let's get it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll be, I'll, yo, I'm not really on social media like that other than Facebook. But if y'all want to connect, if you're in Jersey, South Jersey, I'm at I'm, I'm at St. Matthew's Baptist Church in Williamstown. Dr. Raymond M. Gordon's my pastor. He gets it in. Yo, that's where I'm there. I'm there. Or, you know, work or home. That's it. Like, three spots. And that's that's really it. And so... Um, yeah, if you want to connect, I'm definitely there, you know, getting with those cats that are 21 and 31 so we can build and chop it up and, and, and do this thing for the Lord. So, Dope. All right, brother. We have a beautiful day. I will talk to you okay. again. You, bro. Thank you again for real. All right, y'all. Yeah, We're yeah. jamming out here and uh, just pray for these brothers. More content coming soon. Peace. Oh.